So anyways, it was requested by one of my viewers um, that I write him a schematic. So I thought, well, how about if I just make a video about it? You know, that would be, uh, that'd be the best way to go. And uh, in my videos, I'm always thinking that I've added plenty of information to be able to understand exactly the concept and what I'm doing. But uh, it's a... Uh, at, that's looking through my eyes and uh, and inside my brain and sometimes it's nice to hear from you guys whether or not it's coming across uh, complete or not but anyways I'll draw a little diagram here um, and uh, this is my battery and uh, this is the alternator now uh, this video won't mean much to you uh, to those of you that uh, didn't watch some of my previous um, uh, you know, you have to sort of watch the alternator secrets and uh, sort of figure out uh, what I'm doing here. But um, this is like a part two of, uh, of a video I made on how to charge your batteries, uh, off-grid batteries, not just a battery, because obviously that's what an alternator does inside your car. But to actually hook this up to be able to charge a battery bank inside your house. And my battery bank is pretty substantial in the alternator. It's asking a lot out of this alternator. <clears throat> but I managed to come up with a way of doing it. And, uh, and that's what I'm going to draw the schematics for here. But, uh, so, here we go. Um, so this is the alternator. This is the battery. And, uh, of course, we've got a common ground amongst the two of them. And, uh, so, what we're trying to do here is control the field current. And, uh, uh, if you don't know what field current is, um, it's basically a coil inside of the rotor that uh, is controlled by a set of brushes. Let's see if we can draw this. And uh, here's a rotor. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> so basically, <clears throat> inside here are some windings. And uh, that creates a field, a magnetic field, once it's energized. And these two, uh, there's two little wires that are connected to some slip rings here that are controlled by some brushes that are, <clears throat> one of them goes to ground and one of them is energized through the electronics um, that are usually internal these days, I guess. I guess back in the day, um, they were controlled by, uh, you know, the voltage regulators and stuff like that. But a voltage regulator will will generally tell this thing, um, will give it the juice, you know, to control the amount of field in here. Um, and when it gets turned on, when it gets turned off, you know, depending on the voltage of the battery. So if your battery is at full charge, uh, this thing's likely not going to be, you know, it's going to be energized very little. And if you're batteries having a big load on it it's likely that this thing's going to be putting a lot more juice into the field current increasing the magnetic field i hope that makes sense so anyways so that's what we're going to do here we're just going to control uh and short story because uh, the reason why we're doing this and hooking this up the way i'm going to show you is due to the fact that uh i was using regular alternators i, I think i explained this in some of my other videos um without modifying them i would just buy a, i have a 24 volt battery bank but this could be done with almost any voltage battery bank um uh, the way i'm hooking it up it doesn't have it doesn't have to be a 24 or 12 it's it's voltage in specific okay and it's generally going to be your voltage regulator that we're going to put in line here that's going to control the voltage to the field all right that's all we're doing here and uh, so, um, but short story, back to the short story. Um, so I would use just a regular alternator, but when my batteries were low, that alternator would go full on. And, and with a six and a half horsepower motor even, I mean, probably a 12 horse would probably would have driven it, but with that six and a half horsepower motor, it just about pulled that motor all the way down to where it was just barely running, I mean, it was just full on the alternator was full on and subsequently it would overheat and I'd burn up my windings and my stator 
and I'd burn up, or excuse me, my rotor, I'd burn up the windings of my stator, uh, or I'd burn up the voltage regulator, and I was going through alternators like mad, so I had to come up with something that would work better than what I was using. And so this is what I came up with. I figured if I could control the field and charge less current, you know, over a longer period of time, I could prolong the life of the alternator. It's worked fantastic. I've had this system in place for, I don't know, five, six years now, and um, it works fantastic. I've gone through two motors. Um, I think I still have the original alternator that I did this original conversion with, so it's, it's held up really well. So anyways, um, <clears throat> without much ado, without further ado, oh, and the other thing is I pulled the... I pulled the um, the regulator system completely out of the old alternator. I, I showed you some conversions that I've done for wind chargers and stuff. Um, so uh, most alternators these days are internally regulated. If it's not, even better because you're not using the regulator. You're just pulling all that junk out. You're going to find out which wire leads to your field. You can do that with a simple continuity tester. You can do it with a 12 volt battery and just a couple alligator clips. Um, and as soon as you have a magnetic field, you know. When metal sticks to this thing, when you turn it on, then you've got the right wires hooked up, um, and you know, so on. it you know it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be complicated. Let's say. All right. So, uh, without too much more babbling, so from from the 24 volt supply, I just and by the way, this was a 24 volt alternator, but you could use a 12 volt alternator for a 24 volt system using this method. Doesn't matter. Just pull something out of an old car and just use it. That's what I'm saying. All right. So, anyways, you're going to have a switch here. All right. And that switch is going to turn your system on and off until I can figure out a way to do it automatic. If one of y'all out there can come up with a way, uh, please let's share that information, if you will, and, and we'll incorporate it. What the heck? All right. So, this little, just a simple on and off switch. I just use a, a toggle, you know, for a light switch, an ordinary AC light switch. And just put it in a box <clears throat> and uh, then directly after that we have a potentiometer I don't even know how to draw those things so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna little draw a little dial here and a little circle and that is going to represent my why don't we just call it a pot okay you, everybody knows what a pot is right and uh, and these potentiometers, they have to be pretty big, okay? Uh, the one I have is, I think, rated at like 6 amps. Um, and it's it's made out of porcelain. It's got stainless steel windings. There's no plastic on it at all. It gets hot. I mean, this puppy really gets hot. Um, but you got to buy a big one. I found mine on eBay, like 10 bucks. All right. And then, let's draw in a little voltage regulator. Because you're gonna put your voltage regulator in line. Now, the way I've got this set up is my voltage regulator is just a solenoid um, that's controlled with some electronics. So when the battery voltage reaches a preset or determined voltage, then it actually interrupts this uh, the power that's going here to the field. So it just it just stops the charging and the motor freewheels until the voltage goes back down then it kicks it back in it doesn't have to be complex and I, I think I bought mine from a a place on eBay that I no longer shop with because they're just they just kind of screwed me too many times I won't mention the name I'm not like that um, but it, it was a good product I think other people sell it too um, I bought a couple of them from them and then uh, so at any rate, so that goes through that. Uh, that's your cut in, your cut out. This is the amount of actual current flowing through your field. Um, and this is just an on and off switch that once you turn your generator off, you have to come back inside and you have to flip this thing off, disconnect the field current, or you're just going to constantly be inputting juice through the field at, I don't know, maybe it's like 50 watts or something. And that'll just drain your batteries for no, no reason. And uh, so at any rate, uh, that's what I have pretty much have done with my wiring diagram. Very simple. Um, and so there's one more thing you have to address here. 
and that is are we going to keep the diodes in the back of the alternator now the diode system let me see how you how do you draw these things you go uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. what do you do like this something like that yeah, da -da 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 -da. oh I don't know how am I doing so far guys um, so anyways um, there's your diode system um, and, and and you have these diodes in the back of the alternator I personally took mine out I drilled holes in the back of the alternator to increase the airflow um, you know and uh, to help cool the whole system and I ran three-phase power which you're gonna run three-phase power now remember the reason why it's called an alternator is because it's creating alternating current all right and and you have to convert that alternating current it's three-phase alternating current and you're gonna convert it to DC over here using one of these babies um, you know and and you can buy these bridge rectifiers um, off of eBay and they basically you know they'll have three posts on this side and they'll have two posts on this side and then they've got a series of cooling fins you know whatever but at the end of the day to you know because that I don't know this looks like a child drew it right but hopefully you guys are getting the idea and so this would go to your positive and your negative to charge your battery so this in a sense in essence uh, this circuit would be separate from this circuit so we're talking about one circuit for this a separate circuit for your actual juice going into your batteries okay and it's it, that helps me to separate those two in my head um, and so um, we'll we'll walk out in a second I'll I'll just kind of point it um, or show you once again how I how I've got mine sort of set up but uh, okay so just once again for you those of you who didn't watch my first video <clears throat> so here's my standard ground um, here's my three-phase power and um, here's my con my current my wire that's controlling the current um, <clears throat> second motor that's been on here uh, baby has been through a lot um, and uh, she still just keeps on running look here I got a crack right there in my bracket I just stuck that washer over the crack to keep it from getting any worse what I'd like to do is one day mount this directly in line with that to be direct driven and to get rid of that and this whole setup just less to go wrong okay so <clears throat> here I am taking this stupid thing apart my wife would beat me like a stepchild if she found out I was doing this on her table I noticed one of my three-phase wires were broken so this gives me a chance to kind of open this thing up show you guys uh, just how simple this thing is and uh, so there we go that's all I've got in there um, the only reason I have some of that stuff in there uh, that's just to hold the brushes that's all it's doing and to hold this you know but it's pretty clean not much going on in here where did my wire break I don't oh no that sucker is way down in there that's gonna be a heck of a fix isn't it that just put me in a pickle look at that crap what a bunch of horse Oh boy. Okay, anyways. <clears throat>